Job chapter 14. The book of Job chapter 14. Now, I need to find out again where that list is. This one's ringing, Mike. That list. Who's got my list for the ladies? Is it still right there in that same spot? Okay, let's keep that thing moving. All right. Um, ladies, we'll have that back there at the back at the end of the service this morning. And if you're not signed up for our ladies' retreat, lay out of work. Your husband will babysit. If he won't, we'll get somebody to. Uh, you don't want to miss it. It's Saturday evening at 5 o'clock. Uh, if you can bring this. we got ladies from several other churches coming. And uh, being with us. So don't forget that. It'll be Saturday evening at 5. All right. Now let's look at Job 14, verse 14. Job chapter 14 and verse 14. Everybody look at it. The name of our fall Sunday school campaign is Time Change. That's what I'll be preaching on this morning. Time for a change. Look at Job 14 and verse 14. If a man die, give me a little bit on this one, Brother Mike. Shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. I looked in the Bible and seen what it said about change. And um, said a lot about it. Today begins the 40th week of this year. This is the 274th day of 2006. There's 91 days left. It's harvest time. And my message to you this morning is that it is time for a change. Yes, sir. It's time for a change. This year's went by mighty fast. It seems like just a few days ago, that it was spring and it was getting ready for the youth rally. I can remember us having them few warm days and me asking men to come over there and mow grass. It just seemed like a couple of weeks ago that we had the giant spring youth rally and yeah. all them people got saved. And Then we went into the summer months. July, went to camp. Summer. And they said this was like the warmest summer ever on record in, um, in, in this you know, part of the country. And so it was great. When y'all start looking back at me, I'm going to try to get started here. Amen. Thank you. Now, I got up the other morning and you felt a little chill in the air. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. I mean, it was like overnight. I went swimming. Let's see, when's the last time I went swimming? Not this week. I was in Ohio all week. And they had the pool open. I almost jumped in it one day. But, but I, it, was, it was freezing. Week before last, I went swimming. And then all of a sudden, we woke up and it was cool. Now, it's October the 1st. This time of year, things change. Leaves are changing. Y'all saw the leaves changing already? Uh, I think we're going to have a beautiful fall. Because... Uh, we got rain and some sunshine. It's really going to be nice. Uh, uh, some of the trees in my front yard are turning red already. And I got a big old hickory nut tree out on the other side of my house. And it turns yellow, about like that right there. And then the maple trees turn all, all these colors here. These have already changed. They've been this way all summer. Uh, uh, they, they stay all. We just bring them out when it's this time of year. And and um, the grass quits growing. Thank God. Mine needs mowing right now. This will probably be the last time I have to mow my grass this week. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, you look forward to getting out there and mowing in the spring, but boy, I'm glad it's, it's starting to die down a little bit. Even the sports change. We're switching from baseball to football. You know, the, the fall sport. Our clothes change. As you can see this morning, and we're... Dressing for this time of year. People start bringing out them jackets, you know, and uh, uh, hoods and toboggans and sweatshirts. It's a time of year when things change. Um, 
the air changes. It's getting colder, and uh, we turn. We don't use air conditioning as much, and switch it over to heat. Anybody already had their heat on in their house already? Lord have mercy, it ain't been that cold in my house. Huh? But you've already had to switch. This time of year, you use air conditioning during the day and heat at night. It's a time of change, and the actual days are getting shorter. It's getting dark. I was down here last night for prayer meeting. Seven thirty. It's already getting dark. And it was getting dark at 25 of 10 about three months ago. So we're in a time of change. Um, daylight saving time will end here pretty soon in a few weeks. And it'll be right now, it'll be uh, 25 to 11. Fall back. We set our clocks one hour back. So uh, it's a time of change. And there's something about human nature, we resist change. Yeah. We don't like change. We like things to stay like they are. We like to keep things as they are for the most part. And one town out yonder in Nevada somewhere, they said they uh, still run in last year's weather report uh, because they don't like change. Now, I noticed in the Bible that preaching is supposed to make you change. So I've been praying this week, and I've been praying yesterday and last night, that this message today, God would use what I'm getting ready to say to change you. Yeah. And I expect everybody in here today to be changed in the next few minutes. Preaching has that kind of power when God blesses it and uses it. And if you want some proof of that, I read in the Bible, and every every person that Jesus preached to in the Bible changed immediately. Every person... I looked at all them places where Jesus preached in the Bible, and everybody He preached to was different when He got through with them. That in John 3, there's a story of Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night. He, that's a picture of coming in darkness and sin. He came to the Lord, and the Lord looked and said, You must be born again, boy. And He started asking these questions. How can, a man, how can an old man like me be, enter into his mother's womb? I can't get born again. I'm a grown man. And the Lord said, you was born of the flesh the first time. You've got to be born of the Spirit the second time. He told Nicodemus, you've got to be born again. And I personally believe Nicodemus was born again. He followed him on there even till the death of the Lord. The Nicodemus was never the same after Jesus preached to him. Then we saw the woman at the well in John 4. He, she came to Jesus. He was sitting on the well. This lady come up. She was a Hollywood movie star before there ever was a Hollywood. Uh, she had been married five times. She was shacking up with this man. Yeah. At the time, she came to the Lord. And she came to the Lord that day. And the Lord said, uh, Hey, how about give me a drink of water? And uh, she said, Sure. I, uh, and he, 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 she gave him a drink of water. He gave her a drink of water. He gave her living water. And he said, uh, I'm the Christ. She said, Really? And he started reading her mind. He said, Where's your husband? She said, I ain't got no husband. He said, you said that right. You've had five, and the one you're with is not your husband. So, she ran downtown, and when she done that, she left her water pot and went running downtown and said, Look, you got to meet this man. you got to meet this man. I met a man. They said, you're always meeting men. No big deal. She said, no, 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 it ain't like that. It's not like that at all. She said, this man is different. He can read minds. He told me everything I've ever done. He's the Savior. I'm straightening up my act. I'm changed. I'm different. I'm, I'm a new person. And man, she started going to church. And all them people there in that community believed on the Lord. They all got saved when they saw the change in that woman. You know what Jesus preaching did? It changed people. You know what? Sometimes I get aggravated because I think we preach nowadays and people just... People, here's where they come. People come to church like this. And they sit and look at you like, Okay. This is what you can do for me. Uh, you know, entertain me. Make me laugh. Make me cry. Uh, tell me a good story. Make me feel good. You, that should not be your desire here this morning. Your desire here should be this morning. says, Lord, I need to change some things. Some changes need to be made. And what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to take the plow and drop it down deep in the ground and you're going to be different when you leave here. We caught you. <laughs> you're in here whether you like it or not. And you say, well, I'm not going to change. Yes, you will. Because you know what? As I started looking at the sermons that Jesus preached, the sermons that Jesus preached changed everybody He preached to. The man at the pool of Bethesda, 
And the, the Bible said there's all these impotent people. The old black preacher said all them impotent folk. They was down there, they was impotent. And uh, they was laying around this pool, and they couldn't walk. And the man, man's laying there, and he said, every, every time it would come down and made the water change, first one that stepped in the pool got healed, and he couldn't get in. And Jesus came and gave him a little sermon. He was changed. The blind man, sticking out his hand for some um, uh, help. Give me something, give me something. Like this, you know. Sticking his hand out, and the Lord comes by and goes, pop! Like that, he was changed. He went home sin in John chapter 9. But you say, Brother Danny, them Pharisees, them Pharisees that rejected the Lord, them Pharisees that said no to God, them Pharisees that delivered Him, the Jews that had to be crucified, they heard Him preach and they didn't change. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. They got worse. They got harder. They got meaner. Have you ever wondered what the Bible says meant when it said that the Bible was a two-edged sword? It cuts both ways. It'll cut you in or it'll cut you out. Now, I'm going to tell you something this morning. Everybody in this room today is going to be different when you walk out that door. You will either say, I'm going to change and do right with God, or you're going to be a little harder and meaner than you was when you got in here. The some meanest people I ever met in my life listen to preaching. And you know why? Because the more you reject it, and the more you say, oh well, that was good, but if he really thinks going to do that, he's out here. If you have that attitude, you're going to get harder and meaner because it's a double-edged sword, brother. It'll cut you in or it'll cut you out. And I'm expecting a change this morning. The weather's changing, the leaves are changing, and guess what? Y'all's hearts is fixing to change. You, when you walk out of here this morning, you're going to say, Lord, change some things in my life. God, I've got to do better. God, I want to get right. God, I want to get saved. Or you're going to walk saying, well, I'm, he said some things I didn't like. And he said some things I, you know, you mean that you do? That's what you mean. Uh, you know, you ever wonder why people get mad at the preacher for preaching something that they do? Why would you get mad at me about that? It ain't my fault you do it. I mean, if I preach against killing people and you're shooting people, don't blame me, man. That's like a woman smashing her mirror because it shows her wrinkles in her face. Uh, it, it ain't the mirror's fault. And it's not my fault you ain't doing right. Don't blame me. Man. And it, it, get it, take it up for the Lord. That's between you and Him. Now, I want to talk about this this morning. And uh, I want to say a couple things about it. It's not, going to be, it's not going to be a great sermon, but it's going to be a sermon that you're going to change over. You listening? I noticed this. I noticed that some people continually, listen, some people continually change jobs, change friends, change residents, change mates, and it never dawns on them that it's them that needs to change. Some people, every time you see them, they're, they're good. Well, I, I tried that. I didn't like it. And, you know, I, I like this guy, and, and it, it got old. And I like that girl, and it got old. And guess what? They all get old. Like Liz Taylor, you know. I mean, you know, after a while, wouldn't you start thinking, maybe me, maybe I'm the problem here. You say, well, that first one I like, and me and him couldn't get along. That second one, that third one, that fourth one, that fifth one, that sixth one. Everyone I've got has been a low-down dog. Well, maybe... Uh, have you ever thought maybe might be you? I mean, I just, don't get mad at me. Uh, but have you ever thought? Have you ever thought maybe you're the one that nobody can't stand? Yeah. Boy, that don't feel too good, does it? Have you ever thought? Well, I went to this job, and my boss man was mean, and I worked at that place, and my boss man was mean, and I worked at that place, and my boss man was mean, and I worked at that place, and my boss. Well, after about fifteen. Some people change everything else, but don't want to change yourself. I heard people say, "Well, uh, 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 I, I went, I went to school, and my teacher I hated him. I went to some school, and my teacher I hated him. I went to some school, and my teacher I hated him. My teacher is crazy. That teacher is crazy. That teacher is crazy. That teacher is crazy. It never dawns on you that you might be your biggest problem." Now, I know this is on some of you people. And I know you're sitting there thinking, no, no, it's not me. It's not me. Because you have bragged on yourself till you've really started believing it. You know, you, you tell yourself a lie long enough, you'll start believing it. One person told you you was pretty, and you went, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty. And you really believe it. 
If you as pretty, some of you girls as half as pretty as you think you are, magazines would be calling your house. Yes, and guess what? There ain't no magazines calling your house. I'm telling you, you might as well, you might as well give up on becoming Miss North Carolina. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. The devil just, you just think too much of yourself. Some people say, well, I, I'm this, I'm never, I'm never, I want to move here, I want to move there, I want to change churches. Instead of changing jobs, instead of changing churches, instead of changing mates, instead of changing friends, how about changing yourself? It's time for a change. It's time for a change. Some people continually change everything and won't change yourself. Tell you something else. Most people are ready to change, but not because they see the light, but because they feel the heat. When most people decide to change, it ain't because they see the light, it's because they feel the heat. Give me an example. Man's out here breaking the law. He's out in the parking lot doing something you ain't supposed to, and the cops pull up. You're ready to change, ain't you? <laughs> hey, man, I do that when I'm going down the road and I'm in a hurry. And I'm in a hurry. And all of a sudden I see a cop get behind me. I change. It ain't because I seen the light. because I felt the heat. I, I felt the heat. I, I don't want no tickets. So I said, okay, I'm ready to change. Now, most people don't change because the preacher preaches and they see light. People change when they start feeling that heat. I mean, you take an old boy. I've had a many of them. had one this week. I've had many of them call me and say, Brother Danny, will you go to court with me? i got to go to court Tuesday morning, please. Oh, Brother Danny, I will not miss church. I'll be there Sunday morning. I'll be there Sunday night. I, oh, oh, please pray for me. Pray for me. I sat with this one boy in court. He had his Bible. He had never took word. Took his Bible in the courtroom. I, we were sitting there beside him. The judge was calling out his name. Because he was scared to death. Sitting there reading the Bible. I said, I'm praying for you, man. I'm praying for you. And uh, what? He felt the heat. He was ready to straighten up. But then when the heat got off, he changed again. And, and went right back to his old way. Some people won't change because they see the light. They change just because they feel the heat. And that usually don't last. They say that repentance born in a storm usually dies in a calm. Usually when people get ready to go to jail, and they get, I'm not saying it don't happen, but most of the time, them jailhouse, deathbed, hospital bed, confessions, life. sometimes they do. The thief on the cross did. He didn't have time to backslide. Uh, but uh, uh, listen, brother, you need to make a change in your life this morning. Let me say this. We can only change the world by changing people. We can sit and grab all we want to about the way the world is and how bad it is and the bad things in the world, but you can never change this world without changing people, and only God through the gospel can change people. We can sit and say, I don't like things going on in Washington, D.C. Are we ever going to change it? Me get my heart right, you get your heart right, she get her heart right, you get your heart right. You want to have the best church in this country? Would you all like for this to be the best church anywhere around? I tell you how I'm doing. Every one of us make the changes that we need to make. Simple. Simple. We cannot live any old way, do any old thing, not come to church half the time, not read our Bible, not pray, not live for God during the week, and expect to have this great, wonderful church. We need some changes. It's time for a change. Let me just give you a few suggestions this morning. And I'm going to ask you to make up your mind this morning. When I hit on these few things that I'm going to mention right now, I want you to just think about, can I change that this morning? This morning, I'm going to change. This morning. I ain't going to wait till next Sunday. I ain't going to wait till next week. I'm going to make it change this morning. This morning, right now, at the altar, in this service today. Now, when I name off these things, ask yourself these questions. Is that something I need to change in my life? I thought of the name of this Sunday school campaign a couple of months ago. I was somewhere off preaching. And it just came to my mind, time for a change. And I got to thinking about us and me and our church. And I thought, boy, we need to change some things. There's some things need to change. While the leaves are changing, while the weather's changing, while we're switching from baseball to football, while we're switching from short sleeves to long sleeves and, and shorts to long pants and jackets and, and uh, covering up the swimming pools and, and putting the lawnmowers up, 
Let's make some changes in our hearts. Amen. Let's just make some changes in our hearts. How long has it been since your heart just really been right with God? I can look at some of you this morning, and there's people sitting in here this morning that I've seen weep and I've seen shout. And I used to sing in the choir and used to do something for God. And now you're miserable. And now the devil's got you all bound up. And now your life all messed up because of that stupid sin out there that you've let cheat you out of your joy. And I'm saying this morning, let's change. Let's make a change. Let's back right with God. Let's get on our face before God. Count meetings coming up. The preachers are coming. King James boys are coming. Boy, I'd like for this place to be alive and popping when them people walk in that they could feel the presence of God in this church and make the Lord's here. Wouldn't you like that? I'd like for God to just come down and fall in our church and people get right with God where these little boys and girls, bus kids, could feel the power of God. I'd like to see it. And it will happen if we'll make the changes we need to make. We'll make some changes. How about some of you men? Time for some of you men to make up your mind this morning that you're going to start spending time with your wife and kids like you should. I have no idea where that come from. The Lord just put it on my heart. Some of you men, have you noticed when they want to do something, you never have time. But when you want to do something, you've always got time. When it's hunting and finning something, you can make time. When your wife wants to do it, you're too busy. Now the Bible said a man ought to love his wife. Lord, it's getting quiet in here. Easy does it now. I done opened up a can of worms right there, ain't I? Like the old fellow said, he done quit preaching and gone to meddling. You know, uh, uh, listen. How about how many long have been since some of you men, you're getting your change this Saturday night. You say, honey, you go right on to that ladies' retreat. And I'm going to keep these little darlings. And I'm going to, and, and they're going to be fine here with me. And I'm going to, going to have a good time. Don't you worry about a thing. I'm going to have everything ready. The kids dressed in their bath, given to the Johnny's own, and be ready for bed when, when you get back. That'd be a good thing for you to do, wouldn't it? You better not say, well, I ain't keeping them little brats. I'm playing golf this Saturday. No, sir. Amen. It'd be a good time for some of you men to do something nice for your wife. Make a change, big boy. Uh, you remember, you remember when you first started dating her? Oh, Lord. I mean, you know, you see two, a guy, a woman, a man and woman going down the road nowadays, and one of them sitting over here looking out this window, and the other one sitting over here looking out that window. You know one thing for sure. They're married. When they're not married, she's sitting in his lap. And he takes her out and buys her the most expensive dinner he can buy her and spends the rest of the evening trying to squeeze it out of her. That's what they say. Said that old man and woman was going down the road one time and she was sitting way over there and he was sitting way over here. She was looking out the window bored to death. About this time, this little hot rod went by and there's a guy in there and he had his arm around his girlfriend and they was all hugged up like that, you know, and they was smiling at each other. And she said, I remember when we used to sit like that. And he's over here driving. He said, well, I ain't the one that moved. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, snuggle up a little bit. Amen? Some of you ought to make a decision right now. I mean, just reach up there right now. Grab her hand and squeeze it. And some of you, hey, ladies, same thing goes for you. The only time you're nice to them is when you're wanting money. Preach it. Amen. Say amen right there, fella. Some of you guys are scared to say amen. That's the truth. The only time they're nice when they're wanting money. When they hug you like that, they put their hand in your back pocket. You mark it down. I mean, they're wanting that money. I, and listen, when she comes up all lovey-dovey, you, you know what you want now. That's sad, isn't it? That's too bad. Lord, have mercy. I mean, somebody needs to make some changes. Yes. Sweeten up a little bit. Amen. I mean, thank God. You say, Lord, have mercy. I could have done a lot better. She could have too. So don't worry about it. Uh, love your wife. Love your husband. You don't need to make some changes. Spend some time with your family. Let me tell you something else. Some of you need to make some changes in your prayer life. Some of you need to make some changes in your prayer life. You've let the devil cheat you out of your prayer time. There is nothing of lasting effect going to be accomplished if God's people don't pray. Now, ladies, we'll be down here praying Saturday night, and I believe it's a good time for our ladies to get fired up and get back on our prayer bones. I'm going to tell you, we're going to be having prayer meeting the following Saturday night. 
for the count meeting coming up. Our count meeting's come. We've got to pray. You just don't have a great count meeting for no reason at all. People's got to pray. God will bless if we'll pray. If you want to embarrass everybody in here this morning, I'd let us all stand up and say, how long have we prayed every day this week? Do you pray? Is that the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? It should be. The Lord's always the first person I talk to. Unless the phone rings or something like that, I wake up and I say, Lord, help me today. I go over my prayer list. I pray for all of my girls. I pray for my mom. I pray uh, uh, for all them things hanging around my girls. I pray for everyone up. I pray for I, I, I pray for the I prayed for the dogs this morning. Did anybody else pray for the dogs besides me? I'm the only one in here. Three of us prayed for the dogs. I said, Lord, don't let them stupid dogs bite nobody. Lord, don't let them out there in the parking lot uh, and people step in it. Lord, pray, I prayed for them dogs. You say you prayed for it? Absolutely. We've learned you need to pray about everything. There's nothing too little to pray about. There's nothing too big to pray about. Some people need to make up their mind this morning. I'm going to pray. I'm going to get my prayer life back right. And you know what? Some people need to read their Bible. Have you been reading your Bible? Some of you started out in the first of January. Boy, you was going to read it, read it, read it. And now you don't even know where your Bible is. I'm telling you something, brother. You better read the Bible. You better read this Bible. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Uh, where was I this week? In Ohio. And uh, I was up there, and the first night I flew up there, so the first night the pastor uh, told me, he said, Now, Brother Danny... He said, my wife's going to let you use her car while you're here. And I said, well, thank you. I appreciate that. He said, so you can just go and come as you want to from your motel, restaurants, go eat, whatever. And she had a, I think it was a, is it a Grand Marquis? Who makes that? Merck? Lincoln? Some, it was a Grand Marquis. Pretty nice little red car. Big red car. I, I, man, I felt like I was dealing dope or something in that thing. And a big old red car. And I took off after church Monday night, very first night. And I was trying to find this and find lots and find everything. And I took off down the road. And uh, I, I, was, I said, I need to go to Walmart and get some starch. Because they take all that, they took my starch away from me at the airport. They take shampoo. They take, you can't take nothing on an airplane no more. Unless you put it in a little bag. They just started that the day after I got there. But anyway, I lost my starch. And I had to go uh, to the Army of Shirt to preach in that night, uh, the next night, because I, I got by Monday night. So I went Monday night looking for starch at Walmart. And I knew there was a big Walmart up this road. And there was restaurants and cars everywhere. And I turned like this. And all of a sudden, a cop got in behind me, turned his blue light on. And I'm telling you, man, I thought, oh, Lord, I hope he's not after me. He got right in behind me. I pulled in a little shopping center, rolled down my window. Here he comes. Now these people up here talk Yankee, bad Yankee. I mean, they're worse. Than, they're worse than like where Brother Frankie and them comes from. Frankie and them Southern more. Uh, these people in, in Cleveland, uh, uh, all the way up in there, bad Yankee. The first day I was there, about four people said something about my accent. And every time I, I always say, I ain't got no accent. That's what I tell them every day. And uh, they said that. Uh, they said, uh, this cop come up to me. He said, uh, can I see your driver's license? I said, did I do something wrong? He said, you just turn red on up there. You can't turn right on red here. Do you know you can't turn right on red in Ohio? I didn't know that. I turn right on red. I, I don't even stop on red. <laughs> I, 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 but, you know, if ain't nothing coming, that's stupid having to stop. And I, I pulled up like this, and I just went on. He got him in my I said, sir, I did not know it. I'm sorry. And he immediately knew that I wasn't from around there. Because he said, you didn't turn at the light. 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 That makes me sick. Uh, yeah. They put two syllables in light. They all say, hi. Nobody say, I all say, hey. Hey. They all say, hi. I said, no, hi. How do you spell that? They say, H-I. H-I spells hi. Ain't that right? Hi. Hi. H-I. Hi. Hi has two syllables. Hi only has one syllable. But anyway, he, called, he knew I wasn't from around there. He said, whose car is it? I said, I'm a preacher. I'm here preaching from North Carolina. And this is the pastor's wife's car. He did not believe me. He thought I was some redneck that stole her, I reckon. I, I couldn't find the registration card. I said, honest. He said, let me see your driver's license. I pulled my driver's license out gave it to him. I said, honestly, I've been preaching. He said, what church are you preaching at? I said, Central Baptist Church. Uh, uh, over there, uh, I forgot the name of uh, Tuscarora. Tuscarora Drive. And it's right over there. 
He said, yeah. I said, I am a preacher. He said, what's Psalm 139 say? That's what he said. I panicked. I panicked. Uh, you know, somebody told me, Paul, I can't. My mind went right. I said, uh, is it uh, children or not? Let me ask you something. If he asked you what Psalm 30, 139 say, would you know? I, so I said, is that uh, children are inherited to the Lord and the fruit of the room is His reward? And all that, that's not. It's like Psalm 127, somewhere along in there. I could not think of Psalm 139. I said, I got my Bible right here. Let me look it up. <laughs> and it's that verse says, Whither shall I flee from thy presence? And whither if I make my bed in hell, thou art thou if I you know, I knew the scripture. And I panicked, man. I went blank. I thought, Doom, go, why didn't he ask me what I knew? And I said, uh, I said, man, I said, really? I he said, okay, okay. He said, watch your signs. And he let me go. And I thought, boy, you know what? We need to read our Bible. What if somebody come up to you to work or school tomorrow and said, What do I got to do to get saved? Could you tell them? Need to make some changes. Need to make some changes, man. Need to make some changes. Need to read your Bible. I'm telling you, brother, most people don't know anything. You're like that man who's walking, uh, looking at uh, artwork. Here's how ignorant we are about the Bible. This man was looking at artwork. Oh, some old redneck went in the art gallery. And he's in there, you know. I mean, this back guy. This guy was showing He said, now this painting here goes back to Louis XIV. And this painting here goes back uh, to Charles VIII. And the guy said, that ain't nothing. My washer and dryer over there goes back to Sears at 12. <laughs> Didn't pay for it. Ignorant some people are. I'm going to tell you, we're the, same, we're the same way about the Bible. We're the same way about the Bible. Amen? How about it? All marriage is, is a continual forgiving each other. You have to continually, automatically forgive each other all the time. Amen? If you don't, you're going to head like this. One more time. Uh uh. Not none of that. One more time. You have to continually make up your mind all that they do you don't like and forgive them every time they do it. I can't do that. That's the way you expect the Lord to do you. The Lord does you like that. The Bible said, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven us. Forgive. Forgive. All right? Some of y'all need to make some changes this morning on the TV you watch. Been watching that dirty stuff on TV? Make a change! It's time for a change! God, you say, well, Brother Danny, I mean, it's not as bad as, you know, well, you can always find something worse to compare yourself to. Some of y'all have been slipping on your, been watching some of that trash and that filth on TV. You know what you're doing? You're letting the devil fill your mind with his son. And you're crazy if you think it won't affect you later on. Yeah, it's like putting poison in music too. That's why I tell them kids about rap music. Yeah. You know what rap music is? You know what rap music is? It's sewage. It's spiritual sewage. So every time you listen to rap music, it's the same thing as sticking your tongue in the commode. Same thing. You stick your tongue in the commode. When the commode ain't clear, stick your tongue in it. How many of you kids would do that? You're crazy if you do that. Now, what that does to your body, rap music does to your heart. Amen. Somebody needs to make some changes this morning. It's time for a change. I told you I was going to plow deep. How about your church attendance? Some of you used to come regular on Sunday night. You don't come on Sunday night no more. Some of you used to come regular on Wednesday night. You don't even come on Wednesday night no more. Well, I've just got so busy. They're not no busier than you ever was. You've got your priorities wrong. Your priorities have been switched. Make a change! Make a change! Say, God, this morning, if you'll give me grace, I'll be faithful to church. How about them tithes and them offerings? You've been paying your tithes like you're supposed to? Man, we could just go on and on with this, man. It's time to go see the dogs. Do let the dogs out out there. That's right. How about you? How about your tithes? You been paying them tithes? As you've heard it said over and over and over, God can make you prosper more off ninety percent of your money with His blessings than a hundred percent with His curse. Make a change. You say, "Boy, some of that stuff hit me right in the heart." Good. That's what I was aiming for. It's time for a change. I don't know about you this morning, but I need to change some things. Some of my attitudes, some of my thoughts, some of my actions. 
Amen. Don't you? This will be a good time to do it. First Sunday in October. It ain't going to get no easier. Everybody, I told you, you're going to be different than you was 30 minutes ago when I started. What I've just done, the Holy Spirit will take, and everybody in here is going to be different. You're going to be harder, or you're going to be more right. If you say, I know he sa- I know what He says is right, but I like, I like this and I like You're just going to get harder and harder and harder toward God. Then you're going to get in a car wreck. Or then you- you're going to get pregnant. Or then you're going to get uh, break your arm. Or you're going to get lose your job or something. And then you're going to come crying and saying, I get right with God. You can come the easy way or the hard way. It's just up to you. But it's time for a change this morning. I'm talking to our church members. Good. And ever busy. It's time for us to change. Listen. It's a sad thing when, when, when churches can't depend on the regular church member, preachers, singers, deacons, Sunday school teachers, the bus workers, when you don't even know if you're going to show up or not. That's not the way it's supposed to be. It's time for a change.